Jack Albert Gilbert Frank Kelly was born in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada on August 23, 1920. One of eight children born to Frank and Fanny Cobbs Kelly. The Kelly family moved from Canada to Fresno, California when Jack was an infant. They eventually moved to Tulare, California and purchased a large ranch where Jack and his seven siblings lived and worked during the Great Depression. Jack was a natural athlete, playing varsity basketball, baseball, and football at Tulare Union High School. He excelled in all three sports and received a football scholarship to Fresno State College in 1942. Jack was a tri-letter sportsman while at Fresno State in football. He was the starting guard on the Fresno State basketball team and a starting outfielder on the Fresno State baseball team, even making all-conference honors there. But Jack was best known as the leading ball carrier on one of the highest scoring teams in college football, the Fresno State Bulldogs of 1942. One of his most cherished memories was of being a member of the famous Phantom four in the backfield, which produced All-American quarterback Jackie Fellows, Mickey Massini, and Louis Futrell, along with Jack Kelly. In 1943, he left college to serve his country. Jack, along with four of his brothers, was drafted into the U.S. Army, an army still segregated at that time. After a two-year tour of duty, he returned to Fresno State and played football for another two seasons. He was then drafted by the New York Yankees of the old All-American Football Conference. He was also offered a contract to play in the Canadian Football League, but his heart was in Fresno, and he ultimately accepted a position with the California Youth Authority as a boys' group supervisor. On April 26, 1946, Jack married Rosa L. Conley. They were blessed with six children, three girls, a son, and two daughters from a previous union. In 1949, Jack accepted a position with the Fresno Police Department and was one of the first African Americans on the force. As a new officer, he worked the Chinatown beat and drove the police wagon. In January 1956, he was promoted to detective, and 20 years after his hiring, he became the department's first African-American sergeant in August of 1969. He earned fame for cracking some of the biggest cases in Fresno history at the time, and he was an advocate for many young men and women who lost their way and found themselves in the legal system needing help. He helped many through the system, so much so that he gained the respect of citizens and criminals alike for being tough, fair and honest. If Jack Kelly said he would do something, you could take that to the bank. After 21 years of service with the Fresno Police Department, Jack Kelly retired on October 1st, 1970. Following his retirement, Jack returned to Fresno State to finish his degree and found a second calling. He became a law enforcement coordinator and during the next 10 years would supervise over 200 students who would ultimately graduate with degrees in law enforcement. Community service was the cornerstone of Jack Kelly's life. He served his country, his city, and his community with pride and honor. Well, my name is Reverend Chester McGinsey. I'm the senior pastor of Family Community Church. In my uh, secular trade, in the electrical trade, it was Norman Terrell. He was a gentleman that had a, just a great sense of um, a critical thinking ability, and he helped develop that within me as well. When I look at my spiritual journey, it was Pastor Chester Regans. He was the senior pastor of St. Rest Missionary Baptist Church. One of the things that I admired most about him was the life that he lived before me and the quality of life that he lived, but the fact that he also finished well. Hello, my name is Janetta McGinsey. My mentor was the first person I met in class, in my master's class, and her name was Dorothy Marius. She led and guided me through the twists and turns of Fresno Unified School District, and I will be eternally grateful to her for their love and mentorship. I would tell my younger self that the first step of being great is to be grateful, grateful to God for creating me to be who I am, and never forget the roots and the life lessons that groomed me to become the woman that I will be in the future. Another thing is to love who you are and remember the strong, powerful women in your life. Remember to be kind and have compassion, even when facing anger and judgment. Stay focused and believe in yourself. I, I think that I would honestly say to uh, continue on the path that you're on, uh, learn to stay out of God's way earlier in life, 
God knows exactly what he wants to do. And the scripture says, uh, you know what is good, O oh man, and what the Lord requires of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. That's Micah 6, 8. So I make that a part of my ritual and life. And it, it has guided me uh, in making a lot of the decisions that I make in life. I am truly honored to have been chosen to receive this award. This award is an acknowledgement of a job well done and justification for the agony, the self-doubt, and the hard work that went into it. It is a wonderful sense of accomplishment when you reach the finish line of what you're trying so hard to achieve and you're recognized by the community. It is an amazing feeling of happiness and joy. It is a special moment in time that I will always cherish. The African uh, American Museum Trailblazer Award is a symbol of recognition and inspiration. When there's a lot of things that happen in our community, uh, there are a lot of people who trailblaze the, uh, and make opportunity available for a lot of others. It's, it's a way of preserving that history. This award plays a, a crucial role in celebrating achievement within our community, promoting uh, diversity, and encouraging ongoing excellence within the African American community and beyond. There's no doubt about that. Thank you. God bless. My name is Dorothy Thomas. My mentor has been my mom. My mom was very, very strong, um, beautiful lady, independent, outspoken. She rose to the top of her career. And she would always tell me how important I was, as well as my father. But she modeled dignity, integrity, strength, and grace. She, along with my sister, always encouraged me, supported me. You know, I would tell my younger self to let God and let go. You know, all the things that I have, I've been blessed by God. My blessings are for me um, and given to me by God. As long as I've been a good steward and obedient, then the blessings will continue to flow. And I don't need to sweat the small stuff. It doesn't matter what people think of me, what they don't think of me. I just know that I'm on a path, I've been on a path that's been led by God. The people that I would like to thank for supporting me through all my endeavors is my family, especially my husband who's since passed away, and my children. You know, being in the banking field, there were often long evenings. He was always there to take care of the family, you know, while he also worked a full-time job. When I was gone, he would take over, you know, the cooking, the delivering the kids to back and forth to events. I'm really thankful and humbled by this award, and it's an honor to receive it. I'm thankful for the African American Museum for actually nominating me and considering me for this award. But if I have to be frank, I think there's a lot of work yet to be done. To be named the only female African American senior vice president in banking in Fresno or the, at any bank in Fresno or the community at large in the Central Valley is appalling. There should be more. And again, I do want to thank the African American Museum for supporting me and for this award. I think it's important that people see that people like me can be involved in the community in more ways than one, not only in banking, but in giving back in other ways. My name is George Wilson, Jr. You know, over the years, my mentors have been, oh, I, I've had several, quite a few early on my, um, in my career with the police department. It was uh, Sergeant Bob Mitchell, Robert Mitchell, um, Lawrence Bruchter, uh, James Brewer, uh, Jimmy Ray Passmore. And then as I'm, as I'm coming along a couple of years on, and it's, it's Keith Foster, then even moving on kind of towards the, the latter part of my career, it's, it's been Mark Salazar, um, but definitely someone who's been, I've been knowing even before I got to the police department who helped guide me the entire time on the police department was, was Phil Cooley. Personally motivated, I, I would have to say it's definitely my family. My family, my wife and my kids, uh, you do things and make decisions and, and live your life to, to, to keep them proud, to keep them happy. So, probably my younger self, looking back, I would have to say, uh, just trust the steps that you're taking and be mindful of the steps that you take and the decisions that you make. Definitely want to thank my parents, my mother and my father. My mother, she's deceased, 
my father still a huge support. My wife, Lakeibia Wilson, and also definitely my, uh, my kids, my son, Nicholas Wilson, my daughter, Chase Wilson. It's important to, to know that there are people that they do recognize and see the work that you're, that you're putting in, whether it's, it's, it's for the community. In my instance, it's, it's for the uh, city of Fresno Police Department. And also there was a time when I spent eight years on the uh, Central Unified School Board of Trustees. So you, you get into these, these endeavors and these jobs and, and committees, not for the accolades, but it's more so you have a heart to do the right thing for the right reasons for the right people. It's good to know that my efforts have been, have been recognized um, by the community, but I think it's more important to know there's been some benefit from those people that have been directly affected by what I felt that I was doing. Hello, my name is Yolanda Moore. I have had a lot of amazing people pour into me during different seasons of my life and in different aspects of my life. For as far back as I can remember as a small child, I have always been exposed to tremendous examples of leadership and integrity and humility and then just being instilled the values of family and community and education. So I can't say that it's been one person. I think it's more of a collective that has contributed to who I am and where I am in life. What would I tell my younger self about following my dreams? I would say you are enough and you don't have to wait for approval to do great things. There's a quote by Arthur Mitchell, also a trailblazer, that says, whatever you do, stick with it against all odds. And sometimes you have to just believe in yourself and drown out some of the outside noise. I have an amazing support system. Uh, my support system is strong, my family, my friends. I probably can't pick just one person, but if I had to, I would say my husband because he has to deal with me all the time with my crazy ideas, when things are going well, when things are not. And I really would not be able to do the things that I do if it weren't for him holding me down and holding our family down the way that he does. This award is exciting. And not just because I'm being honored, although I am truly appreciative. But awards like this are exciting because they bring awareness to other people in regard to what's possible, especially the younger generation. And so while being the first is a huge accomplishment, being the only can also be a challenge. And for me, the work includes making sure that I am not the only, that the representation continues to grow, and that I'm not the last. Good evening, and to God be the glory for honoring trailblazers and pioneers of our time. My name is Juanita McDonald, and I am honored to speak of my best friend of 35 years, my beloved husband, Jesse McDonald Jr., who was born in Fresno, California, and to share his life history and his work with the founders Jack and Rose Kelly of the African American Historical and Cultural Museum. It was in his youth that Jesse made the decision about his future, and education was top on the list. Finishing Barber College, he later owned and operated the Omega Barber Shop for 30 years, and during those working years, he graduated from Fresno City College and Cal State University with honors. Jack Kelly was a Fresno City Police officer who walked the beat of Jesse's barber shop, and Jack knew that Jesse connected with people in the community. And it was in the early 1980s when Jack asked Jesse to help with the museum project. Jesse and Jack worked hard along with others for 10 years to achieve this goal. And yes, we are still here after more than 30 years. Jesse was a man of vision. He knew who and what was needed to achieve what they wanted. And they went into the community and recruited faithful, trusting and dependable people who loved their community and wanted the project to succeed. Jesse saw the importance of showcasing the image and portraits of our history and the accomplishments of our community. And he felt that doing so would show the true light of our people speaking for itself and would encourage our youth 
by inspiring them. He was a man of whom I found to be dedicated, trustworthy, and honest. And to Debbie Darden, who will be receiving the Jesse McDonald Jr. Award, your name is very important, and I know you will do your best in all that you do. So please remember that you are the captain of your destiny. My name is Debbie Darden. My motivation comes from the passion that I have to serve uh, in my community. Two people that helped motivate that, uh, my biggest influence was my mom, Annis Darden, who transitioned in 2020, had a big influence over me, and uh, Mr. Bob Mitchell, who became my mentor and still to this day continues to mentor me while working alongside of me. I would tell my younger self to put your dreams together Create a roadmap to those dreams. And while you're creating that roadmap, make your own yellow brick road that leads to your dreams. And start off by following and walking along the, your yellow brick road. And no matter what obstacles come your way, never lose sight or veer off from your yellow brick road. I like to thank my family who's been a uh, trailblazer uh, in my corner. Also my best friend, Renee Russell, a support team that I have, I have a great support team, but also the community who trust uh, me to do what it is that I do. I'm honored to be receiving this award. I'm truly honored to be receiving it behind Mr. Jesse McDonald Jr., who was a civil rights activist in this very city, um, who also has an enormous resume of so many accomplishments, to include, you know, some of the races that he had entered into. And although he wasn't a winner, uh, he strived to continue to be the best that he could in all other aspects um, in the career that he had. So I'm truly honored to be receiving this and honored to be nominated by the African American Museum. Hello, my name is Brenda Starks. My mentor would have to be my mother. She was an avid reader and she taught us so much about having pride and you know, being respectful and treating others as you'd like to be treated. She was always encouraging me to go further, go further. Don't just stop at, at your bachelor's, go get your master's, you know, and uh, she was very motivating for me. My younger self, I have always had a sense of who I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a nurse. I've always wanted to be a nurse, even as a young child, you know, and looking at my mother and just wanting to take care of people and I wanted to be an example for others. I wanted to be a role model. There are family members that supported me. I've got uh, nursing organizations. The Central Valley Black Nurses Association have always supported me. You never think that, you know, someone is watching what you're doing. And when you do what you do, or when I was doing what I was doing, I did it because I thought that this was a very good thing to do. <laughs> I wanted to mentor student nurses. I thought, what is important for me in this field? And the more I thought about it, the more I was acclimated to be a uh, teacher for nurses. I want to have the best nurses that I could produce in terms of education and training because every patient has a right, you know, to be cared for in an excellent manner and that's what I've always pursued. And that's why this award is important to me because it kind of lets me know that, you know, I've, I've accomplished things that I wanted to and and I'm grateful that that I've been chosen to receive this award. Hello, my name is Robert Golden. After playing seven years in the NFL, I decided to retire and come back to my hometown and open up Golden Charter Academy, the nation's first TK through eighth environmental stewardship zoo school. Growing up, I've had many mentors that inspired me to do the work that I was either doing or I'm currently doing now, but I've had a really good, strong advocate of C.J. Jones who's really motivated me to and encouraged me to develop out Golden Charter Academy, and he's been someone that's been in my corner helping me develop out the work that I'm doing now.
You know, the things that I tell my younger self is that, you know, life is always going to present its challenges, but if you keep going, you will make it to the top. You know, there's a saying that says um, the only job you can do uh, where you start at the top is by digging a hole. So understanding that um, I'm going to be climbing up, you know, my whole life, that is something that I would have told my younger self and even speak it to myself now because I'm still climbing. You know, I like to thank, you know, my, my, my family, my mother, my, my, my beloved father who I lost in 2016, but um, it was due to how they raised me and the guidance and discipline that they gave for me as a child um, has helped create me to be the man that I am today. So, you know, receiving the Trailblazer Award is such an honor for me to um, be recognized for uh, this award. You know, um, it's never taken lightly whenever the work that I'm doing is recognized, although I don't do what I do for recognition, but it's super important to um, let others and the generations that coming after us know what some of the people that have came before them has done um, to inspire them to either continue to carry the torch or do something even more inspiring. So um, my life is really just geared to help the next generation to understand how to steward our planet and steward um, our community. And if they do it well, then this universe and the next generation will be in a much better place than where we found it at, that's for sure. Hello, my name is Paul Forte, Jr. Who was or is your mentor who guided you along your path and kept you motivated? My mother. I was the middle child and I was multi-challenging. That is, I was bad. She kept me close every step I took, monitoring my behavior and continually speaking with me. She sent me away every summer to her sister's house who kept me and taught me culture. When they got tired, they would give me books to read, so I actually read them, and that started me on my journey to seeking knowledge. What would you tell your younger self about following your dreams? I would tell Paul Jr. that nothing has changed. Learning is a lifelong experience. Everything I have experienced in life, good and bad, were lessons learned and defines who I was and who I am. Who would you like to thank for supporting you through your endeavors? My mother, father, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, significant others, daughters, nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, teachers, of course, my pastors, priests, pretty females who broke my heart, my chain of command in the army, and all of my haters, the whole damn village. What does this award mean to you, and why are awards like this one important? Despite being an individual who avoids publicity, I believe awards are important like this one because it provides a forum to give credit to the real awardees, those in your life who provided opportunities to learn, participate, and do your best to make unselfish contributions. We don't say thank you enough. Let me say here and now, thank you Fresno State, my colleagues. Thank you Kappa Alpha Psi, my brothers, their families, my family. Thank you Hank Hendricks, a real friend and brother. Thank all of you for making this possible, participating and supporting the African American Museum. We are making a difference. It's not about me, it's about all of us. Hello, my name is Des Washington. I have had many mentors along the way, but um, the one that I know that is most notable in this situation is my grandfather, Richard Keyes. He won the Trailblazer Award years ago, and I remember attending the dinner. He gave me so many nuggets of wisdom, I, I wouldn't even know where to begin. And we had just shared so many beautiful times together. I wish that he could see this today, and, and I'm so proud to participate, knowing that he would have been extremely proud. I think some advice that I would give my younger self is that it really is a marathon and that time is really your friend. Um, everything gets better with time. Uh, I think my younger self was always rushing from one goal to the next to the next. I was extremely ambitious and I always wanted it right now. <laughs> so if I could go back in time, I would tell my younger self, take your time because you're gonna get better with age. You're gonna understand everything so much more in the future and, and it'll get so much easier. 
I would like to thank my parents and my brother. Um, I would like to thank my children who are my primary motivation for everything that I do day in and day out. I would also like to thank mothers who have been my biggest inspiration, obviously my own mother, um, but all of the mothers around me, those have been some of my best mentors. Watching women juggle children, households with careers and everything else that comes along with life, it, it's been the moms for me. Being that my grandfather was a recipient of the Trailblazer Award, following his footsteps, this award means everything to me. I think it's, it's really important uh, to give people their flowers while they're still walking the earth. So um, I, I really appreciate this organization and others that acknowledge folks like myself for um, you know doing good work and, and for everything that, uh, that we, we do in the community. I'm really grateful. So my name is Stacy Jones. My mentor was and still is my family and the dancers of P2P. My family has supported me since the very beginning and watching them accomplish all that they have, it keeps me going. Watching my brother work as hard as he does, even when odds are against him, gives me the inspiration that I need to keep going and doing what I have been called and gifted to do. My dancers also keep me going because they keep going. Over the past 10 plus years, there has been the chosen few that have been working with me and alongside me. They give me reason to keep going each week. Their hard work and dedication drives me to push through even when I get discouraged or when I wanna give up. I appreciate them all. I would tell my younger self, reach for the stars. The sky is not the limit. All things are possible if you apply yourself and don't be afraid to spread your wings and soar. I would like to thank my kids, my family, my love Shane, my dance family, and the community of people that are constantly praying for me and encouraging me. It is an honor to even be considered for this award. When my brother told me he recommended me for the award, I didn't know what to say. I was very grateful. When you are doing what you are passionate about and doing what you love, awards, being recognized, or even receiving accolades is not what you expect. Seeing the smiles on the dancers' faces, seeing lives being changed and renewed is what brings me joy, and it reassures me that I'm doing what God has called me to do. Receiving an award such as the Shining Star Award, I hope will inspire the next generation to pursue their dreams and passions. Knowing they will go down in history for being one of the first to get the job done.